Peter Obi is an ideologue of the Washington Consensus, a mole of the IMF and the World Bank. It is used to be that, like all normal human beings, ordinary Nigerians chaffed at policies that choked and quizzed the life out of them, and leaders feared for and strategized over the anticipated forceful pushback of citizens in response to anti-people policies. The dynamic has died in the last eight years. Sado masochism, that is pleasure in inflicting pain on others and on oneself is the new cool currency in Nigeria. Leaders are unashamed sadists, that is people who derive contentment from seeing others with, uh, with um, others in pain and the followers are unthinking self immolating masochists that is they obtain joy from the suffering inflicted on them by leaders which is encapsulated in the current sterile canad canad that it gets worse before it gets better which i have head government officials utter in defense of a uh, bone-headed policies since the 1980s they will tell you everything is going to be better when they see that people are suffering that is what they will say it's been they've been saying this since 1980s and this is coming from a uh, berugi there's nowhere in the world where the destructive forces of a uh, sadism and masochism reinforce each and stroke each other's passions with as much harmony as in today's Nigeria to demonize subsidies for the poor while turning a blind eye to the extortionate subsidies for the rich has now become intellectually and politically fashionable. It's irrelevant that it is wholly senseless, impoverished, illogical and destructive. What matter is that it's trend is trendy because it has been repeated by IMF World Bank groomed opinion leaders in Nigeria. I have seen otherwise intelligent people regurgitate okay, regurgitate with pride the utterly contemptible wish wash about subsidy being bad for the poor. It is not like an unquestioned ill digested religion dogma, the unjustified pride people take in repeating this stupidity flows from the faith that they have invested in the thoughts, perspectives and opinions of the thought leaders that they respect. But these thought leaders are paid puddies of the World Bank and IMF. These racist neo-imperialist institutions have had tough luck everywhere in the developing world encouraging leaders to embark on programs of mass popularization of everybody folks. Countries like a Kazakhstan, Ecuador, Bolivia, Indonesia, and Brazil have backtracked and reinstituted subsidy that the IMF, IMF had forced them to remove because of the uh, deleterious effects of the removal of uh, subsidies on the poor. The structural adjustment programs serves that the force fed countries in the 1980s and early 1990s removal of subsidy, devaluation of local currencies, mass retrenchment and so on led to mass death and violence pushbacks which caused them to pull back temporarily they went back they went back to the drawing room and re-strategized they realized that they can more easily hypnotize people into swallowing their deadly pills if they invest in recruiting opinion leaders who are not directly associated with the daily grind of governance or who have cultivated some sort of a, a reputational capitalist strong enough to sway a light swath of people. <laughs> uh, hmm. This is this is serious. Yes, this is a really, 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 really serious. That was where people like Sanusi Lamido Sanusi, Peter B, religious leaders with mass appeal, the institutional mass media, and others came in. In the last eight years, they collectively launched, studied, systematic, sustained, and single minded demonization campaigns against subsidies. They were unchallenged because they were strategically stealthy 
and undetected. The result is that for the first time in Nigeria's history, removal of subsidies not only provoked no hostile response, it was actually met with enthusiastic approval from when from even people who would be deeply consumed by it. For the first time in Nigeria history, every presidential candidate except Omo Yele Shore bragged about removing first subsidies and their audiences rejoiced and acclaimed them as visionary and brave. This is unprecedented mass hypnotism. Now, there is no credible opposition to the destructive neoliberal orthodoxy that surfaces the masses of our people. Instead, people are falling over each other to be seen, to be affirming the smoldering of our people. I read a supposedly critical press statement from the PDP the other day, which said President Bola Metinubu's only achievement has been the removal of subsidies. One Professor Chris Umokobia, who was a member of the Labour Party campaign council, lamented to Arise TV on June 29. Tinubu is copying Peter Obi's planned policies programs, although it is delusional to say Tinubu has stolen Mr. Obi's programs because Obi didn't even have a, a manifesto until the last few weeks of the election. Uokobia is right that Tinubu is ruling as Obi would have ruled. Obi is an ideology of the Washington Consensus, a mole of the IMF and the World Bank in Nigeria. He is pro-market and anti-people. As a governor, he saved money and starved people. He fired workers for demanding a living minimum wage, caused needless deaths in hospitals when he ignored a one-year-plus doctor's strike and so on. Plus, on the campaign trail, he popularized a false illogical dichotomy between consumption and production, where he conceptualized consumption to mean the people, uh, subsidy for ordinary folks, and production mean the markets. It was for production and not consumption. That is a fraudulent world bank or IMF duality. There won't be production without consumption, as there won't be consumption without production. That was why the Western finance share press supported him. Although Atiku Abubakar vowed to sell everything and take away subsidy, the World Bank didn't trust his capacity to resist pressure, particularly because he is a northerner whose people would be the most hurt by the world's deaths, the World Bank death pay. They also thought Inubu might be too populist to implement their agenda. Now they are pleasantly surprised that his compliance to their prescriptions of death for the masses of our people. That is where they are praising him to the skies in their media. International praises are intoxicating for low self-esteem legitimacy challenge third world leaders. Tinubu thinks he needs the support of the World Bank, IMF and other races with uh, Mr. Western financial institutions to show up his legitimacy. He doesn't understand that the most important legitimacy he can have is the happiness of the people he governs. Of course, the labor movement is dead. Its partisan association with Peter B, the most right-wing anti-labor presidential candidate Nigeria has ever had, has den uh, denuded its of the last uh, vestige of credibility is had. Now we have a full blown sap in view ropes. The sap that Nigerians rejected with their blood because it exterminated their people is now being embraced. There is even opposition to any sort of intervention to cushion the notionous of fuel subsidy remover. <laughs> oh, ah, in fact, eh. In a nutshell, I'm sure you understand what this guy is saying, both Atiku, Tinubu, and uh, Obio, that none of them, that they have, they would, whether it is Tinubu or Atiku or Obi, that they will see destroy Buhai, they will see destroy the, the country. That is what a Perugi, because this Perugi is the one saying it's a Perugi, 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 yes, Perugi Farouk. Mm. So, what do you people, what are you not talking about? So no 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 solution. So who would have who would have been able to save Nigeria? Because all of you just sit down and be writing rubbish. That is exactly what this guy is talking about. So what is the way forward?
stolen idea cannot be implemented as the owner Tinumbu steal idea from Obi but don't know how to implement it. You remember how Buari bungled TSA IPPIS implementation? Why? Because they were not original conceiver of the idea. Subsidy removal cannot work until the beneficiary like Tinumbu son and others are brought to book. Using Moses and confused Agbadoria. This uh, Akweruga, I don't even know the kind of English he was just talking, talking using BB language and you want to communicate with the people. Who is this man on Sus, one of the educated idiots in Nigeria? Peter Obi never saw subsidy was bad, but what are subsidizing was the core issue and he advocated we subsidize production like in agriculture. You are obviously a stooge and error if you have tasted poverty. You will uh, think differently. Oga, you just use Brick Grammar to cover yourself. But even if you have voted in for your way, you will be the worst. Just like the person you think will get it right. Give mandate to the rightful owner. Let us watch and see. So guys, let's say your opinion and have your take on this.